This scene right here kind of captures the essence of this YouTube channel. My name is Reese and I like to talk about DIY projects, which this is. I like to talk about saving money. I got these solar panels for free because they have cracks in them. I like to fix things and hopefully I don't have to fix them yet. But I also like solar and I like batteries and I'm charging up this portable battery unit with the free solar panels that I got, with the free sunlight that I got. So it's a great combination. In today's video, I wanna talk about choosing a portable power station. These things are great, especially if you wanna get into solar power, but you're not quite ready to put a whole system on your house. You can grab a solar panel and one of these units, and so you can monitor how much solar you're producing and have your own little off-grid system that you can use for backup and portable power. To cover this topic, I'm gonna to review this GrowWatt Infinity 1300 power station. They sent it to me. I'll give you my honest opinion of it, as well as use it as an example of what to look for if you're interested in getting a device like this. So I want to cover what these things are, what you can do and how you can use them, and what should you consider if you're thinking about getting one. So what is a portable power station? Sometimes they're called solar generators because they can easily take solar power and charge up the batteries inside. And that's what this thing mainly is. The bulk of this casing, what's inside of there, is a big battery. And so they come in different sizes and different types of battery chemistry, which I'll go over. But the main thing besides the actual battery are the outputs. And on most power stations, you're gonna have DC outputs and AC outputs, and particularly what the AC outputs uh, can do really matters, and I'll get into that. But on this GrowWatt 1300, you have four USB-A ports, you have two USB-C ports at 100 watt power delivery, which is great because you can run your laptop and charge your phone at the same time. And I, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine in these portable power stations that they don't have as many USB-C ports a lot of times they just have one, so I'm really glad that GrowOut has two on there. And in terms of AC ports, you have four of them here, and then you have your standard car port down at the bottom, which uh, is a pretty standard thing on most power stations. Not every portable power station has a wireless charging pad on the top, this one does, and it works really well with my iPhone 13 Pro, which has this bump and the case on it. I can just put it on there and it immediately starts working. Besides the battery and what they can output, you also have to worry about what you can input into these things, and they're pretty standard, although there is some differences. They usually have a standard DC input, so this is where you can input from your car or solar panels. There's an AC input, so you can plug it into the wall. And this one's nice because it doesn't have to use a big like power brick. It's just a standard plug. And one thing that's nice about the GrowWatt is that it comes with all of the cables that you need to charge from your car, charge from solar panels, or charge from the wall. Now let's talk about what they can do. I'd say there's generally three types of categories for these portable power stations. There are the small ones, I'd say there's like the medium and then there's the large. And the large are not really ones that are portable and they usually have expansion batteries. They're kind of the bigger systems. But these sort of small and medium are definitely portable. So besides the physical characteristics of the power stations, for me there are two distinguishing features that I always wanna look at. And one is what can the AC inverter power and how big is the battery capacity? And for me, one of the deciding factors on is this enough is that if it can run my refrigerator or chest freezer, say if there was a power outage. Because devices like a refrigerator or chest freezer have compressors in them, they need a special amount of power for a fraction of a second to get them going. Then after that, they actually don't need a lot of power. So if you're shopping for a battery unit and you wanna make sure it can run your full-size refrigerator, make sure to check the surge power on the AC outlets. So on the GrowWatt unit, it has 1800 watts of continuous output and a surge power of 3600 watts. And that's actually pretty typical that the surge value is double the continuous output value. Each fridge is gonna have its own starting power. And when I have my fridge hooked up, when the AC output is on, you can see in one frame, there's zero watts of output. And in the very next frame, it's over 2000 watts of output. And then it quickly goes down to the normal operating wattage, which is between one and 300 watts. So not scientific, but if you have a full size refrigerator like mine, you can think about 2000 watts of surge power needed to get your fridge going. And so for how long can one of these run your refrigerator? Well, it obviously depends on how big the battery is, but the GrowWatt 1300 has a 1,382 watt hour battery, and it was able to run our refrigerator with our family of seven using it for 11 hours and 37 minutes. Almost all power stations can run multiple things at the same time, and they're great because I'm inside my RV right now, and this thing doesn't have any fumes. It, it makes hardly any noise, really almost none, unless the fans are really going. Um, but you can see I'm running a cooler down here through the, uh, the 12 volt port and that can run for a really long time. Uh, right now, it says at 100%, I can expect 25 more hours of runtime. So it's great that I can run a portable refrigerator, charge my phone, laptop, watch, and all these things, but can it handle more power hungry devices like a water boiler 
and a microwave. And so that's another thing to consider is what is the continuous alternating current output. So let's boil some water here. So you can see here it's using about 1630 watts to run the microwave. So this is a kind of a bigger microwave and this little unit is ha not having any problem running that. Now I can't run the water boiler at the same time because it'll put it over that limit which it has 1800 watts for the inverter. But once this stops, I can stop it right here and now I can run my water boiler. Let's just turn that on uh, and now I can make my coffee which is very important. And you can see here, this water boiler is using about a thousand watts. So if you're going to want to run things like a water boiler, a microwave, or an induction cooktop, for example, that need that higher wattage, you need to make sure that the AC inverter can support that continuous wattage output. And smaller units than this, generally speaking, are not gonna be able to do that. To give you a sense how much these weigh, this one has a little less than 1400 watt hours of capacity and it weighs 42 pounds. Something else you can use these guys for is like a UPS. So that when the power goes out, it automatically switches is over to battery power. Now, not all power stations have that ability, so make sure to check if that's a feature that you want. Usually, if you can input and output alternating current at the same time, it usually has that feature. So I wanna test this feature out, and what I've got going on here is I have it plugged into the wall over here. So I've got wall AC coming in, it's charging the batteries, as well as outputting AC power over here to run this laptop. This laptop does not have any battery in it, and so what I wanna do is I wanna simulate a power outage to see if it can switch over to, from wall AC to the battery pack to keep this laptop running. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out. You notice the screen didn't flicker at all and it was so fast that it switched over to the battery pack. So you could use a feature like this for your electronics or maybe even like a CPAP machine. As I mentioned at the beginning, I like that you can easily charge these things by solar. Now brands usually sell their own portable solar panels, but as long as you stay within the voltage and current limits on the station's solar input, you can use any solar panel you want. So for example, the GrowWatt 1300 can take up to 800 watts of solar. I've got 385 watt bifacial panels here and so I can use two of them to charge it. And in this setup with full sun, I can get a full charge from 0% in about three hours. And then if I wanted, I can turn around and use it to run my refrigerator for almost 12 hours. Next, let's talk about what considerations you should take into account if you're thinking about buying a power station. There are many considerations, but let me cover my top five. First consideration, does it live up to the specifications they list here about the unit? Now, obviously you have to rely on what other people say, but at least for me, I'm making this video and you can ask me questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them. For the GrowBot 1300, I would say that it performed as expected in all of my tests. I was able to get almost 800 watts of solar input. I was able to do a full discharge near the maximum continuous AC output of 1800 watts and it could charge from zero to 100% in about an hour and 40 minutes. And I was able to get 100 watts out of these USB-C ports. A helpful test with these devices is to get an idea of the efficiency of the AC inverter. So I have two test results to show you here. I ran a full discharge close to the 1800 watt maximum rate. The fans are spinning very hard to keep the unit cool the whole time. And you can see I got a 76% efficiency. Then with another test with a continuous output of 900 watts from 100 to 0%, you could see the efficiency got significantly better at 89%. With that all said, I do have a few other things to report. And I also mentioned these to grow out for improvement. One issue I ran into, I think has to do with voltage negotiation on the USB-C. It only happened when my laptop was at full charge and running directly from the USB-C port. What would happen is that it would randomly power cycle, send my laptop to internal battery power, dim the screen, chime, and then do the reverse. So it was actually pretty annoying while trying to work. I also had some trouble connecting their smartphone app to the device and the best word I could use to describe it was clunky. Like sometimes it would work like you would expect and that other times I felt like I had to do mini gymnastics to get it to connect. But once you got it connected, it would work great. I also think they missed something on the app that they might want to fix. Like you can talk to the device over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, which is great, but say you're in an area where you're camping and you don't have any internet access, so you think, oh, I can use Bluetooth to talk to the device. But here you go to open the app and it's requiring you to log in. So you need the internet to get into the app so then you could turn on Bluetooth and talk to the device. So uh, I think they might wanna change that so that you can just go right to Bluetooth and talk to the device, say, when you don't have internet. Another consideration is the battery chemistry. There's really two main ones out there, NMC and LFP. Most power stations are moving over to LFP, which stands for lithium iron phosphate. It doesn't have the same energy density as NMC battery types, but it has a longer cycle life. So the cells inside of here are lithium iron phosphate. 
they're rated for 3000 cycles. And so if you don't know what a cycle is, let me explain it. It's when you take the battery at 100%, drain it all the way down and take it back up to 100% that represents one cycle. So this means that you can use this at full discharge and recharge every single day for over eight years before you've reached that 3000 cycle mark. And that time can extend even further if you cycle the battery less often. Next consideration is the physical characteristics of the device. This one's 42 pounds. It has these two handles here, so it makes it easy to carry. Again, that's the wireless charging pad at the top. I like that it has the USB-A and particularly those two USB-C ports. Taking a look at this area, you can see the screen. It's got two different colors, the green and the white. And as an information junkie, I really appreciate all of this information. So it's showing me what's inputting the wattage, how much time is remaining to reach 100%. It's also showing the output wattages and the time remaining on the battery and it even shows when the inverter's on, the voltage of the inverter and the frequency. And for the buttons down here, I'm not real crazy about how they look and feel, but they work just fine. Now the fourth consideration is does it have a smartphone app? I mentioned some of the clunkiness of connecting with the device to the app, but once you're inside of the app and connected, everything works great. So you can see all kinds of input and output, basically what's on the screen over here. You can see it on your smartphone app. You can communicate via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi anywhere in the world to monitor it. So I like to take a look at how it's doing. Say I have it sitting outside charging in the sun. I wanna see if it's like fully charged or not and this will allow me to do that. You can also do very important things like change some settings. You can change the charging power, uh, turn the beep on and off. But probably the most important thing is that you can, with a click of a button, check the firmware update. So let's check my firmware and see how I'm doing. And it says that I'm currently up to date. So the final consideration is price and warranty. Obviously you wanna think carefully and shop around because these are significant purchases. So some companies offer a two-year warranty on their batteries. And I like the companies that offer five-year warranties and GrowWatt is one of those companies that offers a free five-year warranty with the purchase of the 1300. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you in case you're interested in getting a portable power station. I know I used this one as the main example and reviewed it. And if you are interested in this one in particular, since it's brand new, it is on a sale price and I'll have a link to that information in the video description and I'll keep it updated with any future deals or discounts.